Today we are going to learn about components of ecosystem. Let us first understand what is an ecosystem. There are different organisms around us like trees, plants, different animals, microorganisms and non-living factors such as soil, wind, rain, heat, minerals, etc. This creates our environment. No organism can live alone in its environment. To survive, each organism is required to interact with other organisms and abiotic factors around it. For example, various organisms in the forest depend on each other for food and abiotic factors. Every person in the village depends on other people, different animals and various physical factors for some reason or the other. All the organisms in an area, the abiotic factors in the environment and their interactions are called an ecosystem. For example, forest and villages are ecosystems. Ecosystems can be very small like a small aquarium and they can be very big like an ocean. Ecosystems can be natural or can be man-made that is artificial. Ecosystems created by nature like ocean, forest, rivers, lakes, ponds, seas, mountains, etc. are all natural ecosystems while ecosystems created by humans such as aquarium, gardens, farms are all man-made ecosystems. Any ecosystem consists of biotic component and abiotic components. For example, fish, frogs, various birds, microorganisms, algae and nearby trees etc. living in the pond ecosystem are all called biotic components and rain, water, soil, heat, minerals etc. are all abiotic components. If we talk about biotic components then they can be of different types. Producers, the autotrophs such as green plants and some bacteria which produce food for entire ecosystem through photosynthesis are known as producers. Heterotrophs such as goats, rabbits, foxes, lions, etc. which are directly or indirectly dependent on the producers for food are called consumers. Organisms such as goats, reindeers, rabbits, grasshoppers, which directly obtain food from autotrophic organisms are called herbivorous organisms. Organisms such as lions, foxes, cheetah, which obtain food by eating other animals are called carnivores. Some organisms such as humans, pigs, chickens, obtain their food from both plants as well as other animals. These are called omnivorous. Some organisms like kilni, lice, plasmodium, amarbale, etc. obtain food from body of other organism without killing them. These are called parasites. Many microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi decompose dead remains of organisms and convert these complex organic materials into simple inorganic materials. Such organisms are called decomposers. These substances are absorbed by plants. Decomposers play a vital role in the cycling of nutrients. Now, let us learn about the food chain and food web. Organisms in any ecosystem 
receive food from other organisms. For example, grasshoppers get food from plants, frogs from grasshoppers, snakes from frogs, and eagles from snakes. A chain of organisms in which one organism is food for another is called a food chain. The length of different food chains is also different. Basically, an organism eats more than one organism and is itself eaten up by more than one organism. In this way, different food chains combine with each other to form a network of food chains that we call food web. Each step or link in any food chain forms a trophic level. In this way, autotrophs or producers form the first trophic level. Herbivores or primary consumers forms the second trophic level. Small carnivores or secondary consumers forms the third trophic level. And the large carnivores or tertiary consumers forms the fourth trophic level. The main source of energy in any ecosystem is the energy contained from the sunlight. Plants convert about 1% of solar energy into food energy. When plants are eaten by the primary consumers, only 10% of eaten food is converted into organic matter and the rest energy get used up in heat, digestion, various biological processes such as growth and reproduction. In this way, only 10% of consumed food is available for the next level consumer. This is true for each level. In this way, only about 10% of organic matter available at each level reaches to next level. Thus, there is a progressive decline in the available energy at each trophic level due to loss of energy at each level. Since very little energy is available for the next level, the food chain is generally limited to three or four levels. Remember that the flow of energy is in one direction. In this way, the energy can flow from the sun to the plants, plants to the primary consumers, from primary consumers to the next trophic levels, but cannot be in the opposite direction. There is one more important thing in the context of the food chain. Due to water pollution and use of excessive chemicals, various chemicals move into the soil and are absorbed by plants. These chemicals are transferred from plants into other animals. Some chemicals such as DDT are non-biodegradable. So, they are progressively accumulated at each trophic level. This is called biological magnification. Due to this, the concentration of chemicals at any trophic level is found to be higher than its lower trophic level. In this way, it is found in large concentration at a large trophic level. Since humans occupy the top position in any food chain, the concentration of these chemicals is highest in humans. This is a matter of concern for us. You must discuss biomagnification with your teacher and find out how the problem of biomagnification can be prevented and what are its solutions. So today we have learned about components of ecosystem.